I went for a West US road trip in December 2018, and it was mind blowing. My wife doesn't like cold weather, so she didn't went with me last time. After several times of strong recommendation, she agreed to go this year. So I took my camera and my drone, and we went on to the trip. Our first destination is the Oregon Coast Highway. It starts from a small town, Astoria. The best part of Astoria is this long bridge connecting the Washington State and Oregon. From the air, it looks really great. Then we moved on to Cannon Beach. This place is famous for this huge rock on the beach, and the whole beach is amazing too. Just look at the endless waves coming towards the beach peacefully. There are many viewpoints on the highway. Here in Oregon, a lot of the viewpoints are at the cliffside. You can have a sort of bird view feeling here. I took some clips, some in the morning, and some at the sunset. Taking some time off and just watching and listening to the waves is really pleasing. Let me just shut up for a while and let's enjoy it. We slept at the campground overnight, and the next day morning, we visited the beach nearby, which is called Hisita Beach. This beach also has a big rock, like Cannon Beach, but with less people and more seabirds. Another beautiful place on our way to California is the Face Rock View Point. Especially at the time we arrived, the sun just came out. This is a breathtaking scenery. 
he definitely was the trip to go there. There are many more places to explore at the Oregon Highway. We only have two days, so if you have enough time, you can probably spend a week here. It will be very relaxing. When we entered the California state and bypassed the Redwood National Forest, we saw the tall trees along the road. To see the tallest redwood tree, you will need to go to one of the trails in the park. Our next stop is the Yosemite National Park. We drove all the way down through Auckland. This is the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, so you can see the north side of Silicon Valley and San Francisco are just across the bay. Near Livermore, you will start to see the desert landscape and lots of the wind turbine along the way. After hours of driving, we finally arrive at Yosemite National Park. We plan one day in the park. We went to this signature point like Yosemite Falls, El Capitan, and Tunnel View. We are not very much into hiking, and also we feel the view is similar to what we see in the parks in Washington State, so we end up just spent half a day in Yosemite. Next day, we went to the Sequoia National Park. We saw some fruit trees and many solar panels on the way. There is also a cool lake outside of the National Park. On the day we went there, the temperature is around 85 degrees, so spend some time at the lake is a good idea. On the way to the center of the park, you start to see these huge trees. The park is on the hill and it's also around 10 to 20 degrees cooler than outside of the park. These trees are on the planet for around 3,000 years. We visited the General Sherman's tree because this place is close to the parking lot. 
Just look at the size. The radius of the tree is around 15 feet. After Sequoia National Park, we moved on to Las Vegas. We were just driving into the desert. More wind turbines are on the way. And there's a place that stores airplanes. Well, it's not an airport. It's called Mojave Airliner Storage. I think it should be very fun to visit it in person. I had lunch at Peggy Sue's in Yermo, California, which is a quite famous restaurant on the way to Vegas, just alongside I-15. I took some drone footages to see what the desert looked like. Here is another footage of Seven Magic Mountains. It's a place just 20 miles outside of Vegas. These colorful mountains are said to be demolished by the end of 2021. So finally we arrive at Las Vegas. We don't gamble, but just want to have a walk around the city. It's early May and the temperature was already close to 100 degrees. 2021 is the hottest and the most dry summer in the history. I hope people there can hold up to it. I stayed at the Area Hotel and paid $160 for one night. The view was beautiful. Vegas has the cheapest 5-star hotels in the country. They mostly earn money from their casinos. So if you just want to stay, you probably will get most of the value back. Our next destination is Zion National Park. But before that, we also visited Valley of Fire State Park. There are several spots in the park. We went to the Fire Wave. It's around 2 mile round trip trail to the viewpoint, but it's really hot. At the end of the trail, you will see this fire-like texture on the rock. I think it looks beautiful and worth the chance to challenge yourself for the weather. Then it's another long drive to St. George, where you can have a break on the way.
on to Zion National Park, we know that the narrow and angels landing are two of the most popular spots, but right now it requires to take a shuttle bus to get in. So we only went to the Canyon Overlook Trail. It's around a one mile trail and it's not very dangerous, but you can still get a feeling of what it looks like in Angel's Landing. Then I was planning to see whether I can camp in the Grand Canyon North Rim, but the road was closed around 15 miles to the entrance, so I just stay at a free campsite in the Kaibab Forest. You can see part of the forest was burned in 2020. That's unfortunate, but having a drone to shoot the sunset was amazing. Moving on to the next day, we are going to Page, Arizona. We saw a large area of flatlands, and along the main road, some small canyons start to appear. This is the historical Navajo Bridge, sitting right above the Colorado River. At this point, the canyon is already really deep. Page is on the top of the canyon, so you need to continue to drive up. Our first stop in Page is the famous Horseshoe Bend. It's my second time here and I still feel the place is frightening high. You can see how small are the people enjoying themselves on the river. If you have a time in Page, I also recommend you go to the recreational area, which is a reservoir blocked by Glen Canyon Dam. Next stop is the Monument Valley. This is a big reason why I want to have this trip. Because the first time I've been here, I had a wonderful impression of this place. It's really beautiful and remote. I did camping last time. I really enjoy spending some time without internet, just 
with these huge and uh, weird-looking rocks. You feel like the whole valley is yours. On the way to my campsite, this is the signature place of a Mexican pet, because this is a Mexican pet. My campsite is near San Juan River. There were not a lot of people in the town, so it's very quiet. I like the sunset and sunrise here also. Just look at the phone footage. And here is a ranch with many cattle near the canyon. Then I move down to Arx National Park. Just look at how long is the queue. I never know Arx National Park being this popular. because my time is packed and I don't want to hike too far, so I choose to go to the double arcs. It's just less than one mile long trip to the arcs. From far away, the arcs does not look big, but when you get there, it's really big, tall, and very unique looking. You can climb up a bit and stay far away, but according to my wife, it's quite windy up there. After another long drive to Salt Lake City, we arrive at Great Salt Lake. God is beautiful. From the parking lot, there is still a bit of walk to the beach. It's just a beach covered with salt and symbolic Utah Snow Mountains at the far side. When you drive west to Salt Lake City, there are many salt factories and on the ground, the salt layer is becoming even thicker. That's because thousands of years ago, this place is also part of the Great Salt Lake. The original lake is around one third of the size of Utah State. Right now along the highway, the empty and flat salt land lasts for around 100 miles. This place we went to is a salt flat near Bonneville. It's becoming popular in recent years. It's a great place for flying drones. When the drone gets a little further from the ground, 
and you can see that the salt forms a pattern. Some people also drive their cars on the flat. If you continue driving down the highway just a little bit, you can find this small and shallow salt lake. There is no designated parking lot, so not a lot of people here. The small lake becomes a natural mirror. It's an even better place for taking photos. My last stop back to Seattle is Twin Falls in Idaho. I camped here one night on my last trip, and I didn't know this place is also very fun. The first spot I went to was Perrin Memorial Bridge. This bridge was built in 1926, sitting over the Snake River. So at this viewpoint, I think the view can compete with Horseshoe Bend, and it's free. This canyon is also really deep. The second spot in Twin Falls is Shoshone Falls. It has two falls. I initially thought this is where the name of the city Twin Falls come from, but it's not. Twin Falls is actually another fall nearby. I feel really lucky on this day that I can see the fall with the rainbows from the sky. Well, that's my 3500 miles road trip. I saw all sorts of landscapes. Landscape is what I like for quite a long time. I hope you can also spend some time with your loved ones. Go to some place that can relax, enjoy yourself, and have fun. <laughs>